Hello and welcome. This video is going to show you how to use Telerik controls in WinForms to be tested by TestComplete 8.5. So let's get started. In TestComplete 8.5, I'm going to go ahead and create a brand new project in here. We'll call it project number 47. That sounds like a good name. And as soon as we get into TestComplete, you will notice that there is a tools from the menu, current project properties in here. This gives you an idea of all the different properties that you can set on, on your current project. And you will notice also something here called object mapping. If you click on the object mapping, you will notice that the Telerik suite of controls have been added to Test Complete uh, 8.5, which is definitely great. It means any of the red controls from Telerik, all the controls, especially the grid view, the ribbon bar, the uh, trackbar, the tree view, all the major controls are available in here. In this video in here, I'm going to show you how the grid view from Telerik Red Controls for the WinForms will be able to be recognized right away inside of Test Complete 8.5. So let's go ahead. I'm going to go to Visual Studio right now. I'm going to go ahead and create a brand new project. Let's say new project. And we'll create a WinForms application. This one we'll call it Telerik red grid example and say okay there and inside of here we'll find the our red grid there is all the components from the red controls from uh, from Telerik red grid is right there red grid view we'll drag this one in here Let's make it sizable enough so you can see pretty well. All right, we're going to actually set it really quickly here to any kind of data set. We'll go to the Choose Data Source. We'll create a project for data source. Go to the database. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to hook it up to my maybe Northwind database really quickly. And we'll hook it up to maybe the Employees table. How about that? All right, we'll say Finish. And now, as you can see, the metadata of the whole grid is showing up. Just to make sure this is working correctly, I'm going to run this really quickly and we'll be able to see the whole application running at runtime. And there we go. Obviously you can see, we can see the whole data right inside of there. While this is running on my screen in here, folks, I would like to go back to Test Complete and see if Test Complete actually recognizes um, that specific grid. So if I go to the object browser in Test Complete 8.5, you will notice in here that there is the process for Telerik Red Grid example that we just created. It's running inside of Visual Studio right now. That's fine. And I can actually see the WinForms object com form one, as you can see in here. I'm going to open that up. And I probably will see my Red Grid view right there. If I click on this Red Grid view one, folks, you will notice in here that I have um, definitely a little bit more properties than I had before, especially the extended word for W column, column count, row count, and W value. These were not available before. Now that Test Complete 8.5 can recognize the red grid, I should be able to see these properties in here. I can even click on the advanced view in here, and I can see hopefully a lot more properties that were not shown before for the Telerik red grid control. Alrighty, so this is a lot more information. I can get there is 18 columns, and I can actually make very easily go through all the, the columns in a for loop and get the data. The, the nicest thing I like about this is that I can actually go into my project. Let's go, for instance, to my test one keyword testing, and I can do a table checkpoint, which is mainly a grid checkpoint, really. I'm going to drag this table checkpoint in here, and I'm going to say next. If you drag this icon and have a red, red rectangle around the entire Telerik red grid, if I release the mouse right now, the checkpoint will try to recognize this entire control. Before test complete 8.5, if I click on next right now, I'll get an error. It says I could not recognize the, the internals of this control that you just clicked on. But with 8.5, when I click on next, notice it actually recognized everything inside of this grid, all the columns. One, one uh, main thing, notice there is a photo in here which has the binary. That does not actually work with the checkpoint, so you'll have to turn off that. But that's the only thing that you need to do. Anything that has the bits to create a photo for binary is not going to be saved inside of the, uh, the checkpoint. So you need to turn it off as far as store is concerned. When I click on Next, 
In here, it will recognize the entire data. And there you go. These are all 17 different columns with the nine records coming from our table for the employee table for the North Wind. We'll say finish. And now this entire data is saved in here inside of my store. And I can checkpoint this every time I run uh, my checkpoint from test one. And it will tell me if any of the data changed or not. So that's great. But that's not really the whole story. The whole story is that a lot of people like to make modification to the grids that you see in front of you in here. So how do they do that? Let me close this for a second, and I'm going to show you the problem that a lot of people uh, encounter because R&D usually make modification to these grids. So I'm going to open up Visual Studio one more time. And instead of using this red grid view, which is coming from Telerik, Win, Controls, UI, red grid view, that's the class name of what this is coming from. A lot of companies, you will notice, let's go ahead and go to the code for this, for instance. They will end up actually descending from the Telerik grid. So I'm going to come in here, show you what R&D does so you can understand the problem. We'll say public, we'll say class, we'll say my grid, and I will create this as a descendant from the Telerik dot web controls. Let's uh, cheat. Let's go ahead, go to the design of this page there and what I want is this class in here Telerik Web UI grid view so let's go back in here and I'm actually gonna descend straight from this so I'm creating my own class in here folks and it is descendant from Telerik uh, red grid view but maybe I want to add a couple more properties or maybe I want to overwrite some of the functionality that Telerik did for the red grid view okay in my case in here, I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to create another class called MyGrid. All right? It's a descendant directly from Red Grid View. But I want you to think of this as R&D might actually have more properties or more functionality that is not part of the grid, but make it automatically part of the grid. OK. Now, on the Form 1 load in here, what I would like to do is maybe to create this dynamically. So instead of uh, doing that, we'll say something like MyGrid. That's the name of the class that I just created above. We'll create it as called RG, for instance. That's my name for the grid, for the instance. We'll say new, my grid. All right, so that's, that line will actually create the instance of the new class. And let's go ahead, and I'm going to bring in a few lines of code in here to show you what this is all about. So I'm going to create the location. All right, put it somewhere on the screen. I'm going to set the data source exactly the same one like the first grid, and I'm going to give it a name. We're going to call it my grid. I'm going to set the size of this whole thing as well. What is the only thing left to do in WinForms is that I have to actually add it to the form. We'll say, say this dot controls dot add, and I'm going to add RG, which is our new control. Just by doing that, folks, if I run this code right now, notice what will happen on the screen. Ah, it's hidden behind it. Maybe we need to give it a bigger X. That's okay. But they're both working, as a matter of fact. So we'll uh, close this guy instead of this uh, 149. Let's make it 349. How about that? 349. All right. We'll run this one more time. All right. That's good enough for me. All righty. I just want to move this on the side, and I'll show you what Test Complete can see now based on these two grids. By the way, these two grids are identical. The only difference between them, folks, is this one is using immediate descendant from the Telerik Red Grid View, but the other one is my own class that still descends from the Telerik Red Grid View, and it doesn't make any modification to it whatsoever. All righty. Let's go ahead and see what's happening now in, in memory. Well, obviously, the Form 1 has two grids. One is called My Grid. And the other one is called the Red Grid View 1. That name is not important. The important part is the class behind it. The My Grid is a descendant from My Grid, is that's the name of the class, and the Red Grid View is a descendant from Telerik.webcontrols.ui.redgridview. So when I actually try to actually see what exactly is happening um, in here for the object browser, you will notice that when I go to Red Grid View, let's show you this in the uh, in the basic view. I will have the column count, the columns, the row count, and the value. When I click on the grid in here, folks, I will not get any of that stuff. Test Complete has no idea what this thing called my grid is running in memory. That class has no idea. That's why I wanted to show you the part about the tools, current project properties. We'll go to the object mapping. This is one of the most powerful things of Test Complete 
uh, as a matter of fact. It's been available for a long time in Test Complete. I can now grid, click on the grid view, and it will tell you that Telerik controls are covered by Test Complete, and there is a class for Red Grid View as descending from Telerik Wind Controls UI Red Grid View. The beautiful thing in here is that I can actually add another class name. What does it mean adding another class name? That means I want you to treat any class name in here as if it was a Telerik Red Grid View. Okay? So if I come in here, I can add it directly from the screen or from a class name if I know the class name. If you don't know the class name, just click on Add from Screen, drag, drag this guy, and go to My Grid and drag it and drop it right there. See, if I do that, it will tell you that I found a class called My Grid. We'll say OK there, and look what happens. Now, under the Grid view, we have two classes that will be treated as if they were the Telerik Red Grid. One is called Telerik Win Controls UI Red Grid View, and the other one is called Telerik Grid Red Grid Example dot My Grid. That's the full namespace and the class available. Does that make sense? Let me save this now, and let's go ahead and see if the object browser got any smarter. Alrighty, I'm going to go back now to um, in here. We'll refresh this so we can read directly from memory. And there you go. There is my grid now. has the column, column count, and row count. And everything is hanky-dory. I want to show you also another problem. I'm going to open this up. And I'm going to delete this guy. Remove this. All righty, we'll save this now. And let's go ahead and do... A, another checkpoint. I'm going to drag a table checkpoint in here. We'll say table 2. And this time we'll go to the new red grid. Even though this is still a red grid, when I say next in here, this is actually going to fail. It's going to say the selected object has no data. It does not recognize this control and it does not know how to get inside of it and get all the columns and rows. That's why it's important to add this. So now I'll fix it one more time for you so you can see it. Add from a screen. Say OK. Ah, <laughs> OK. I actually didn't add it. I just uh, modified the one, which is a really bad thing, but I'll fix that later on. <laughs> it's OK. But right now, my grid will be understood in there. Now, when I go back to my, uh, my test one in here, we'll drag my table checkpoint. We'll say drag this to the new my grid. And if we've done our job right this time, when I say next, it will recognize my grid, which is a new class, and it was able to read everything inside of it. Hopefully, that gives you an idea what is object mapping, and also a pretty cool thing. Ah, and there you go. That's the error about the, uh, the, uh, the photo. The binary cannot be there. That's good. I'm glad you saw that problem as well. So you have to turn off anything that has to deal with binary for photos or images. And there is the data coming from my grid. All right. Hopefully, uh, you understand now what object mapping is all about and why you need to add your own classes and also show you how to use the Telerik controls in Test Complete 8.5 to be able to get into the properties and methods internal to the controls themselves. All righty. Thank you so much and have a great day.